Good day, everybody. First of all, I'd like to remind our, us that uh, there are two terms that we use a lot. One is groups, and the other is periods. Groups are the columns. So these are this is group one, group two, group three, group four, group five, group six, and so on. The periods are the rows. So we can say this is in the first period, the second period, the third period, and so forth. Okay. <clears throat> now on your periodic table that you're given in class, uh, we've shown, which is this one right here, it already has a little stair step here. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and draw that in. Notice that it starts under boron and uh, it goes down to, to stop under astatine. So we're going to go ahead and draw that in. That's an important little uh, dividing line. Starts under boron. And it stops under astatine. And that's important because generally we categorize the types of uh, elements as metals if they are to the left of that stair step or nonmetals if they are to the right of that stair step. The one notable exception to that is hydrogen, which obviously is to the left of that stair step, but it's pretty uh, also obviously not a metal. So that's the one exception to that. So metals, we say that they are to the left of the stairs, nonmetals generally are to the right of the stairs. Now there's a term that uh, we you might hear, and uh, we're not going to deal with it too much because we're not so much interested in the chemistry of the metalloids. But there are elements that uh, are right on this border between what we call the metals and the nonmetals. And these elements share some properties of metals and some properties of the nonmetals. So uh, typically they include boron, silicon and germanium, arsenic and antimony, tellurium and polonium. And depending on the source, they may include astatine, some don't. I'll go ahead and include it. So these metalloids, I'll go ahead and say I have put in uh, uh, pink highlight. Okay. Other categories that uh, we need to be familiar with are listed down here in section B. So the first one is alkali metals. And alkali metals refers to this Group one, alkali metals, with the exception of hydrogen, right? Because we know that hydrogen is not a metal. Otherwise, group one is the group of alkali metals. Alkaline earths or alkaline earth metals is group two. Okay. Transition metals, they include this big block of elements. These are transition metals. Okay, it includes all of these block, this block down here. So scandium all the way down to zinc, and then these, all of these down here. Now there's a special uh, term for these transition metals down here, normally, notice that the numbering system goes from 56 at barium to 57 at lanthanum. And so technically, this lanthanum should be right there, right? And all this row normally would be tucked in right there. But that would make the periodic table really wide, and it would be tough to fit it on a page unless we made it really small. So most periodic tables pull this row and this row out and put them down at the bottom. So these are also types of transition metals. 
but they are called the inner transition metals because they fit, they would be tucked in right in there. So these two rows are the inner transition metals. Okay. Next group that we need to be in, uh, uh, familiar with are the halogens, and that's group 17. Group 18 are the noble gases. We're familiar with those, noble gases. <clears throat> then we get the groups, the lanthan, or not the groups, but the uh, categories, the lanthanides, and that's this row because it's based on lanthanum. We get the actinides, which is this row, because it's based on actinium. And then there's a term, rare earths, which you may have heard in the news. Uh, they're fairly important elements. They are especially important in semiconducting, or semiconductors and electronics. Rare earths typically include the lanthanides, and often scandium and yttrium are included in the rare earths as well. So those are the main groups, uh, the main categories to be familiar with. Now for this class, you don't really need to learn every name of every element. I mean, some of them are quite interesting and the history is, is very interesting of how they got their names. But there are a lot of them that we need to be familiar with. So this section down here uh, tells, uh, covers what I would like for you to uh, be familiar with, what I would like for you to know in our general chemistry class. First of all, I'm asking you to know the names and the symbols, but not their atomic numbers. So for example, I would expect you to know scandium is SC. I would expect you to know how to spell it but I don't expect you to remember that it's uh, atomic number 21. So for the ones that I do want you to know, it includes all of the main group elements. So typically the, word, the phrase main group means everything that's not a transition metal or an inner transition metal. So main group applies to groups one, two, and 13 through 18. And I'm going to go ahead and say that probably this very bottom row of these right over here that I'm putting in yellow here, you probably don't really need to, to be uh, to memorize those. They're uh, they're fascinating if you're uh, particularly if you're in particle physics, but uh, they really only exist in laboratories, so we don't really need to know those in yellow. But otherwise, main group groups one, two, thirteen through eighteen. I want you to know all of those elements, how to spell them, how to pronounce them, and how to write their symbols. So that includes groups 1, 2, and 13 through 18. Yes, that's a lot. We're, we're now at general chemistry level, and I expect you to know more than you did at the fundamental chemistry level. In addition, I'm asking you to know the first row of the transition metals. So remember this block is the transition metals. And I'm asking you to know the first row. So we have scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, and zinc. Those are the first row. So it's elements 21 through 30. Okay. In addition to those, yes, there are, there are still more to learn. In addition to those, I'm asking you to be familiar with 10 more that are industrially and commercially important. So I'll go ahead and write these down. M-O, molybdenum. mo lib -di -num, molybdenum. P-D is palladium. A-G is silver. Not gold, it does have a G in it, but it's silver, not gold. CD is cadmium. W is one of those uh, strange ones that doesn't correspond to its, its uh, name and, and uh, common usage. It's tungsten. 
T U N G, not like not spelled like the tongue in your in your mouth. This is T U N G S T E N, tungsten. Then we have PT, which is platinum. A U, and this is gold. H G, and this is mercury. Just a capital U is uranium. And PU is plutonium. Plutonium. Okay? Those are all the ones that I would like for you to know for this uh, general chemistry class.